course, I welcome you all here. This is a big point for the community and the senior center to try to get this program off the ground in May. The history, uh, this goes back, this building is 33 years old. Uh, the addition was added on 17 years ago. Uh, and it was done by mostly townspeople. Typical way Menden did things back then. Uh, and it worked and served a purpose. It was a great building. Except back when they built it, there was probably less than 1,000 senior citizens in town. This addition was put on when there was a thousand roughly, 17 years ago, and we're now at about 17, 1800 senior citizens. That doesn't count the number of people who come in and want to use the facility. So the history goes, we've needed a facility probably shortly after we built this, 17 years ago. And now we're at a point where I retired and joined Amy to serve coffee and things. She asked me to help with Peg and a few others to do this. I'm the uh, chair of the building committee. The uh, process from there on the building committee, we've got a good cross section of a lot of people. Peg, you want to uh, go I would, the I would just say we were very lucky that we have people that have specialties in all of the areas that we need. We have specialties like communication, uh, building. Um, we have uh, Chief Kersey, who was very instrumental in building the, fire, uh, the police station. He's on our committee. And we also have other people who come and they join and they help out for a certain amount of, of time to do whatever has to be done. But it's our core. We have a core uh, bunch of people that have been very good about this. We've been working on this since August. Uh, Phil didn't mention this but because he probably wasn't here at the time, but this is actually our third attempt at trying to do this. And it's the first time we've gotten to the point where we can actually go before the voters and ask. We feel confident about it. We understand how the money situation is for people. We understand people are going to make the decision which best fits their own lifestyle and what they have. And we understand that. But we feel that a senior center along with a community center is the way to go. Uh, we're, we're elder, I'll speak for Phil and I, we're elderly, but we don't feel elderly. We, we, we feel like, you know, we have a, still a lot to give. We're not home, yeah. sitting at home, doing stuff. We're here, we're being active in the community, and we want to have some uh, recreational activities. We want to have walking trails. We want to provide another basketball court for the kids. Um, uh, shuffleboard, shuffleboard, pickleboard, pickleball, which is very famous now and happy. People like it. I like it myself. And um, so we have some renditions. And uh, we have a very good architect. And he has come up with some sketches. Yep. Do you? Yeah, let me. You want to go ahead? Yeah, if we could. Uh, once we got the committee together, we said, what's our needs? So we interviewed a bunch of people here at the center. We determined. We interviewed people in town. What do we really need for a community center and a senior center? And that was the basis for our building. Our original attempt was to put the, uh, expand this building to take care of it. This lot has some challenges. It's limited in its size. Uh, we did have additional acreage, an acre over here on the side beside us to put additional parking, but we were still limited. And the chief brought up a number of points about the traffic coming in and out of this location can be rather difficult. And as we looked at that, we said, okay, let's do due diligence as a committee. Let's look at four other sites, three other sites. Uh, we determined that uh, we looked at the MISCO, not MISCO. The we looked up at the corner of, Hot, of um, North Street mm -hmm. and Hopedale Street where the library was supposed to go in a few years ago. That land had been donated. One of our prerequisites was we didn't want to have to pay for any land. So when we went out exploring, we looked at either town-owned land yep. or land that someone offered to voluntarily give to us. That's a big savings, the cost of land. Yep. So as Phil said, it was the corner of Hopedale Street, which is down by Misco. Yep. This building, uh, I don't know if you're aware, but where the fire station was built, there's an old, there's a building that's not quite finished. It has a dirt it's a, floor. It's a, it's a shell of a building. It's a shell of a building. That was originally going to be the police station. It was another town incentive, but it didn't have the requirements to meet the police station. And the final one is up at the corner of Route 16 and North Avenue, 
which when that land was purchased, it was purchased for like fire, safety, municipal, municipal and um, it's in the center of town, which is a very good thing. It's yeah, close a, to the schools. Yep. With those locations, as we looked at them, uh, we looked at a number of factors. The, uh, the one at North Avenue, uh, Hopedale Street, there's a lot of conservation restrictions on that land, which would have taken us at least two, two and a half years to reverse because you have to go through the state. It's not something we can do as a town. It's legislative approval. So we had to do it through two legislation cycles after we go through two town meeting cycles. And there were a lot of provisions in the conservation that we couldn't build on it because the building size was too large. Well, actually, the, the, plot, the plot that was designed for that conservation was very small. They call it the footprint. Yes. The, you know, how it affects. Yeah, the, the one down at, uh, the, by the fire department, that one had a number of dangerous issues because we, ha we have to park right, pull right through the fire department to get there. And people said, well, it's nice to have a fire department and ambulances right next to you, but it's also not nice when you have to try to have people coming in and out in emergencies. And the footprint there would have cost us to redo that. We would have had to tear some of that building down and then reconfigure it and probably uh, cost more in the mm -hmm. long run. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not, but we house the food pantry in town, and we'll be happy to show you what it's like downstairs so that you can see for yourself, and you'll see why we do need an expanded food pantry. Mm -hmm. See, we have these little shopping carts because we try to have people feel as, you know, as comfortable as they can, and some people will want to pick out their own things. Um, it, it's... Uh, two aisles. I'm going to have you come through this way. As you can see, they already started putting together orders. We give them a form. When they pick up their food, we give them a form which lists everything that we have in the food pantry, and they mark off what they want. Paper goods, uh, anybody who's on SNAP or food stamps, they can't buy paper goods. So some people want uh, additional uh, paper goods as well as food because they can't purchase it. All that, I have to say, thank the Boy Scouts, the schools. Mm -hmm. um, there's a woman, her name is Alana, and I don't know her last name, Amy knows her, but she puts on Facebook when we need things, Amy will say, Alana, can you uh, put something on Facebook? And she'll put down, this is what we need, this is what we're short on, and she, she does it right away. I, I've never met her myself, but uh, we're very grateful and thankful for her. Now, the uh, Friends will be having their yard sale in June. Mm -hmm. That is their major fundraiser. Okay. Uh, like I said before, they are the uh, financial arm of, uh, of the senior center. They, they provide monies for things that we don't get money for. And this is our garage, and it houses the senior van. And uh, we deal with medical equipment. Anybody in town, you don't have to be a senior. Mm -hmm. You have a son, he breaks a leg and he needs crutches, call us. We have crutches. Come down, check it out. They're, they're loaned. They're not given, they're loaned. But we're also the emergency, one of the emergency locations in case of a disaster. We provide, if it's hot in the summer, it, the temperatures cool. get high, people come here to cool off. Same thing in the winter. If you lost power, it was exceptionally cold, you can come here with a warming station. But because we, and we take care of the entire town for that, that requires a lot more space than we have. I believe, Amy can correct me, but I believe it's, thir it's 50 down here, 50 is the maximum down here, and 15 upstairs. Yeah. The number of people? Yeah. Uh, technically, it's 25 upstairs, but you can't fit. No, but 50 down here, but 50 down yes. here. So we've had activities and things where people have to be turned away. If they haven't signed up, we, we draw the line saying this is as many people as we can handle, then, then you're waitlisted. We don't want to have to do that. We want to be able to have the seniors come here and participate because they want to. And on the other point there, you bring up an interesting point, Peg, is that we can only do one event at a time effectively. We have to reconfigure this room uh, every time we do, t uh, this, uh, vision this as a room for yoga, or v uh, vision this as a performance where we have the uh, minstrels singing, and we have to configure it maybe for an audience rather than tables. When we have uh, an activity or, or feeding people, 
you can fit about four people in here before we start getting it into each other's way. Uh, you know, uh, it's been here 33 years. Does it serve its purpose? Yes, it does. It does serve its purpose. You have to be very careful that, you know, you don't get caught on the chair going up the stairs. And then you come up here, and as you can see, it's pretty narrow. And if you had a cane and stuff, this is the upper room. This is also where the Lions Club would come up and meet, or the Scouts. We have the Girl Scouts and the Boy Scouts that come. Um, this is a little area. Janet is our outreach worker. This is her office. You'll notice in this building, there's only two offices, and we have three staff members. So uh, Amy's assistant is outside her office. She has no privacy at all, and she's the one answering the phone. It, it's, it's very difficult. But anyway, this is kind of like a waiting area. Building where it sits on North Avenue. That's approximately 20. This is North 20. Avenue here. Yep. And this is Milford Street, otherwise known as Route, Route 16. 16. So you can see we're not right on the road. We're down a ways. If you know where the stone wall is up there, we're beyond the stone wall on that lot. That uh, municipal lot that the town has is about 22 to 26 acres. Uh, we're going to use about three acres of that, so there's still substantial land left below us that could be used for, by the town. And someday if we want to do something else with it below, we could do that. Also the top lot where the overflow is always for Clough School and any other town event is still available. There's a recommendation that the town do something with that, like make it a parking lot or make it available for, uh, mm -hmm. I think there's some question about making it available for uh, uh, a, food, a food stand in the summer. So those things are all still possible up the front end of that lot. And then we move to what does that all mean and translate the programs here. And being community and senior, we have, again, going back to what Peg says, we are the food pantry for the town. We are the outreach for young people and seniors. Fuel assistant doesn't go by age, it goes by income and need. Mm -hmm. And if anybody needs something in this town, any, any person, the outreach coordinator here will help them assist as well as Amy. I've seen them drop anything in a minute to help people out. We're like first call, actually. Yeah, first call, absolutely. There are 10 to 20 organizations that meet in this building, mm -hmm. non-senior related. The Cub Scouts and Girl Scouts have meetings here. The Lions Club meets here. We have uh, other groups that would like to meet here, but there's not enough room in the evenings. So this can become a community facility that other clubs, other people can use more efficiently than it is today. Rooms and availability for families for organized events. I saw in a posting on uh, In Town Facebook, anybody know of a, rent, a place where we could have our kids come to do a party? That could be available to the people to be able to use function rooms in the lower level of this building. There'll be a nominal charge for the cleaning services, but it'd be a lot cheaper than going and renting one of these other areas. You go down this list and we have, uh, in addition, working with recreation department and the uh, conservation group with Ann and her team and Dan, we're looking to get funds for the recreation facilities, as Peg mentioned. Uh, that was the racquetball courts and baseball, uh, basketball courts available to the townspeople, not just to the seniors. These are things for the whole town. And, and that, I, those, the costs of those would be handled by Ann Mazar and her committee. It wouldn't the, be on yeah. the conservation. It would not be... Um, it's not added to this. It's not added to this, which we should tell you the cost. Everybody deserves to know that. Oh, yeah. We're looking at $13.2 million. Uh, if any of you have done any building lately or had to buy wood or anything like that or had yep. to hire a union person, you know that the rates have gone up tremendously. We figured they had gone up uh, over 25% in the last few years. Last three years, yep. uh, And the, the point that Ann made about that CPA funds, that's tax money we've already paid. Right. We've paid that as townspeople to 3% of our taxes go to that fund. And this is going to be designed to do recreation for the town. And also, we're going to possibly put in, one of the design things is, to come up with an ADA handicap accessible trail. We have tons of trails in this town, but not one is ADA accessible. Not only for seniors, but for people who have handicapped children or spouses or for the whole town. 
with the proper parking to get in and out of it. But that again will come from Ann Mazar and her team. They support this program and they're going to fund it with CPA dollars, which we've already paid. So it's Down no additional cost. The downstairs will hold a much larger food pantry, and I really do hope you take the time, but hold on to the railings going down <laughs> to see the facility downstairs and, and how really inadequate it is. We are meeting the needs of seniors who need food. We do. Uh, whether it means we make the deliveries or we have them drive up or some of them prefer to come in and, and we have little shopping carts and uh, they can do their own shopping. But because we are an emergency shelter, um, we have been told we have to provide showers downstairs along with the cots. We have the cots now, we have 30 of them, but we're gonna need more than that. We're gonna need to be able to house 125 people in town that need emergency shelter. And part of that is that they have to have showers and we have to have some additional toilets downstairs. Those are all costs that um, we didn't consider right away, but we've been told since then that we have to. There's been a Red Cross review with the emergency management team in town, mm -hmm. Mark and, uh, and Dave, uh, the chief, who are the responsible for that effort. And to bring us up to spec, it would be about to be 125 people to, to match the population. Uh, we will, we'll be looking and seeking grants through this whole process to reduce this number and get back to the town. But they're all potential, not guaranteed. We're doing a lot of areas there. We're going to, anything we receive will be offset to debt level going forward. But we need to go for the, as you'll recognize from town hall, you need to go for the funds that you need with 13-2. Right. The, the, about that number, the professional cost estimate that we, we arrived at here wasn't one we swagged out of the air. This was done by a professional firm that does building and constructions of municipal buildings and senior centers and community centers. So we have a detailed cost that covers the entire facility and, and it has the 10% factors in for adjustment. It has, uh, it has a million dollars in there for consideration for overage. I think we can keep that to 500,000, but we're gonna leave it at a million. So we have a, a good solid cost estimate. We had a good engineer who evaluated the lot and found that there was some question about whether there's some contaminants and the lot it came perfectly clean. He knew that there was uh, an apple orchard, apple orchard tafts. So we had to make sure that that was We went out to soil addressed. sample the location to a pro not us, professional sampling company. They tested the soil. We, don we dug uh, 10 holes, 10 feet deep, to see if there'd be any contaminants that we'd have to handle, because you'd have to move them or transport them out of the area. So that was all done. Uh, the well would not be perked until the summer, the dry season, which is typical for Menden. But the soil that uh, we discovered, there was good air soil sample, which was sandy, which means it supports a leach field mechanism that we would need there. This facility also, when you look at cost and things, it'll have automatic sprinkler systems, which is needed today in new construction for municipalities. So we're gonna have like 500 gallons of water stored underground, which would automatically feed that sprinkler system. So those kind of elements are in there. The building's being designed as energy efficient, highly energy efficient. If we get the solar grants, we'll add that onto it, but we remove that from the cost of the building. Uh, original cost of the building was 17.4 in the neighborhood of. So we went back to the designer and the architect and said, okay, what can you do? That's too much money. Mm -hmm. It came back at 14.7. So then we said, what else can you do? <laughs> and he came in at the current rate of 13.2. But in doing that, we had to take into consideration if we get solar grants from, from uh, the state or from uh, our solar power company, we can add that. The building's being built as solar ready and, and efficiency, considering the green approach we're gonna to go to. And that can be added to this building at any time. We're gonna parallel while we're doing the investigation for contractors and everything to try to find those grants. And once we do, we can add them onto the building. Now, the, one of the questions we hear all the time is how is this gonna affect my taxes? Legitimate question. On an average, we thought, we've been speaking with Jody, the treasurer, and she said if you have an assessed home value of about 500000 
it could be between 325 to 350 a year on your taxes. You need to know that. Like I said in the beginning, everybody's going to make the decision based on their ability. Everybody has different bills. They get a different amount of money coming in. And, and believe me, we understand all that. Yeah. It, it, I, well, we don't have the final number in, but that's the range we're looking right. at. She'll, she'll give us the better yeah, she's, numbers. She's, she's on vacation week, this week. And then yeah. next week, we're going to try to tune that to the final number. That's what they're doing right now, putting all these numbers together for the town warrant. But that's the range we're looking at. Should we take some questions now? Uh, I, think, you I think that's where we're going forward. Yeah, because yeah. we don't want to get too much in the weeds. Yep. Uh, any questions? Yeah. So the 13.2 million, which is the approximate budget for this project, um, we've already answered the question, these designs take into consideration that $13.2 million budget, right? Yes. These designs, the, these designs were what the 13.2 was built off. Okay. So, so the $13.2 million cost, where do you see the money for that coming from? How much is it? Available cash? How much is it? No, going it's, to uh, be? it's, we're going to go for a total debt, ex we're going to go for a t debt, ex Override, as we call it in the old time. It's going to be a, on the ballot for $13.2 million to be assessed to the taxpayers. It'll be uh, on May 3rd. The, uh, it's going to be on the warrant for the May 3rd meeting at Misco School, and uh, we are asking for the 13.2. Now, um, we are working with the treasurer about any kind of debt that's coming off this year and see if any of that can be applied. We're looking at that. Our goal is to not have to come back and ask for any more money. Sure. But the 13, um, the, the extra money in your taxes, if, if everything passed, would be for how long? Uh, the 13.2 is for a 20-year bond, I believe, right now. So, so that's how you're going to pay for the project, if right. you will. It's, there's a bond. There's a and, bond. And the, and the town yep. will pay you off the bond yep. like it would a normal mortgage yes, like through it, the revenue that it produces from right. the tax override. Right. That's okay. correct. But um, we do have the financial arm of the senior center are the friends of Mendon Elders. Carolyn is the president of the friends. And they will be doing fundraising, active, active fundraising. We're hoping to get some donations from the community. Uh, we probably will hold a few functions ourselves. Um, and then we're, uh, what we'll try to do is reduce that. But the real bill we're going to the taxpayers is 13.2. It's for a 20, I think the last, I, heard, I haven't seen the final numbers, but I think it's a 20 year bond. And the impact of that is, as Peg said, somewhere between three to 353. In yeah, that that's if your home is assessed at 500000 yeah. which they felt that most of the seniors are either uh, at that or maybe maybe below. Um, we'll have a scale that we'll be able to put yeah, in Yeah, we're going to have that information available. Yeah. And uh, any other questions? Keep going. No, please Keep do. Rolling. That's why this we invited great. people. Um, are there possibilities for any kind of revenue stream with special functions or anything, or are you looking at this as being uh, If we do special functions, I think it's more cost. To, ma to maintain? To ma the cost of the function, so we don't increase operating costs, costs. So we're not looking to make a profit or functional money out of it, because this is a community town center. That's right. I mean, theoretically, if you built this building, you could do functions, you could make money, but and my, light, my light bulb went off on that, but I said, oh, it's a commu community center, <laughs> so we don't want to. And Amy's come up with some ideas and schemes for the future, potentially, we could look into similar things that Bellingham is doing, which adult is day. Adult, day, adult, adult day. Adult daycare. Adult daycare. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. What's your, what's, your, what's your thoughts? What's your feelings about Oh, and we do need, oh. I'm sorry, we need a two-thirds. Oh, yes, two-thirds. We need a two-thirds vote for it to pass, just so you know that. One of the reasons I'm that I wanted people to come into this building, particularly, and I'm hoping you get people that haven't been here before, although I do know it's used a lot by the community. But as a senior myself, this building is particularly not really very good for us. There's many of us that you can't get up to the second floor. Um, I'm one of the people that's moving furniture one day a week. Again, we're moving these tables in and out, chairs in and out. Um, 
I, I also know the importance of a community centre for the social aspect. You know, we're hearing again and again that being lonely is as bad as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. And the point of a community centre, it's not just for seniors, it's for everybody. Mm -hmm. This is going to be our, like the town's, our community centre yeah. and senior centre. I know if it doesn't pass, what would it take to, to do this building? In, I mean, even, for, I know it's, it would be about the same cost, wouldn't it? The architect told well, actually, us it was the building, same amount yeah. of money to gut this building and redo it as to build new. He said, but in doing that, um, the problem is, is that there's only two acres here. Now, I hope all of you were able to park here, but when we have an event, uh, some of us who can run fast okay. have to park across the street and hope that the cars slow down enough for us to cross. It's very, very dangerous. We have a lot of seniors that have walkers and canes and things like that. And so if you use the second acre that's here, that would pretty much handle parking and we wouldn't have any of these recreational things. We would have none of them. And our idea is this building is going to be used for at least 30 years, at least 30 years. Being up at the corner of Route 16 and North Avenue, there's plenty of room for expansion in the future if we needed it, if we needed it. But um, I, I like yeah. Carolyn's point that, I mean, I hope you walk around the building after, and I'd be happy to give tours downstairs. But you can see how difficult it can be if somebody's trying to get up those stairs. Yeah. Any other questions? We're happy to answer anything. Yes, Tom. Uh, so, uh, sh should the uh, yeah, should this pass? Ah, thanks, Tom. So, this would take, as you mentioned, a two-thirds vote. Yes. Um, at the uh, annual town meeting. May third, yeah. seven o'clock. And in school. addition oh, to, it, it would then have to also pass at the ballot. Two weeks well. later, but it could. It, it, it's not two-thirds at that point. It yep. can even just be one. But yes. Yep. Yes. And. Should this pass through, I mean, it's a great, it's a great program. I think it's a great opportunity for the community uh, and, the, and the seniors specifically as well. Should this pass, what, has there been a time frame given as to how long this might take to actually what come to fruition, to yes. build out? And uh, we looked at that with the architect, discussed the building, typical of municipal buildings. First thing we go is get an OPM to manage the project. Uh, that'll take about probably two to three months to find one, acquire one, go out to bid. After that, the OPM will take a look at its next design phase, uh, which is getting really structural design and engineering, detail engineering designs. And that could take another three months, and then we go out to bid. We'd be going out to bid at the end of the year, probably, is the goal. Construction starting next, uh, in 2025. But the good thing is that we get to stay here. It, it's not so much of a disruption. Okay. Good point. Because if, if we decided this building, we were going to add on to this building, we would have to move. We would have to move the food pantry. We'd have to find another spot for the emergency shelter. Um, it, and it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be easy. And when we found out that it cost the same amount of money, we went with the land that the town had. Yeah. Because all the challenges you have in any site, the water, the sewer, and we're not, we don't have a, we're right now a non-standard well here. We don't have a, the well is non-standard standard here, so we'd have to redo the well here. So you have to do a well here, and we're not sure quite where the leaching fields would go. Because you have a larger facility, you'd need to disperse that. So. Okay. Um, I know else? the coffee's ready. <laughs> well, town meeting, don't we have to stay after for the other two? Well, two other I, I understand the question you're asking. Uh, Ann Mazar's group, uh, they okay. want to get the CPA funds, funds. approved. Yes. They're only going to bring that forward. It's going to be on the warrant, but they can always withdraw it. If this does not pass, mm -hmm. she's withdrawing she's going to withdraw the funds for that because there's not going to be any building. Right. But yes, yeah. yes, if you wanted to stay. If it passes, then we need to stay. I don't know. Is that yeah. a two-thirds yeah. as yeah. well? Yeah, well, it's, 
I'm not sure about CPA. It might be, maybe two thirds, maybe majority. I'm not sure of sure. that answer. You should stay there. Uh, and her and the good thing about her plan is that the site engineering work that we're doing to for the top, top, topography to level it will also reduce the cost of trying to put these fields somewhere else. We can do that all in new construction rather than try to dig something up and do something different at the beach, if you will. And the final thing I want to say, because I, I, we're losing the thought, everybody says, well, what about this building? What's going to happen to this building? Hmm. This building is in good shape. It's just that it's too small. So um, this is going to save the town from expending even more money to build additional a building for, let's say, parks and rec or an extension of the highway department, which is right next door. So this building yeah. will be town used. It's yeah. not, not going to just lay here vacant. Currently, the conversation with the select board is that as soon as we get approval, a committee will be put together to do a reuse of this building. Parks and Rec has already put their eyeball on this and said this would be a great place. Uh, and also, uh, highway department needs facilities. What that means, it's going to knock off at least 300 to, I'd say 500 to a million dollars worth of future cost because they have a facility they can move in. That's right. It's, in, already, it's in move in condition. Yeah. So the building will be transferred to some organization within town. And the candidate right now, and since I'm not a. No, we have, uh, that would have nothing to do with us. Have nothing to do with it. <laughs> but I know some of the people, Parks and Rec and uh, Highway, are looking at it. And the highway lives right next door. So it kind of makes nice logical sense. All right. We're going to. That's it. I think yes, any other thank questions? You. Uh, we want you to stay for refreshments. We want to give you a tour if you'd like one. And uh, please feel to ask any questions of us when we're walking around. Or anytime. And we thank you for coming. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. I don't know how to shut this up.